Yeah, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all. Fellow beer friends, lovers of freedom, people of goodwill, we bring um, greetings to every one of you with the name of Oputamono, with the name of Abasi, with the name of Olise, with the name of Chukokika Biyama. Yeah, um, of course, um, like we noticed you earlier, that we'll be right back, that you should stay tuned, don't go anywhere, and of course, we're back again. And of course, you, uh, we are back with somebody whom you all have been waiting for, somebody whom you all have been waiting to see, somebody whom you all have been waiting to meet, of course, and I will believe that you have prepared um, whatever question you have for the person, um, we are here with um, this very evening from here. And I want to encourage you to encourage other people to join this very um, wonderful program that will be um, holding tonight. So, um, and as we're doing that, before we come and, you know, make the introduction and also, you know, proceed with what we have for you guys today, um, we have to, you know, um, go to, uh, for the national anthem, the Biafra national anthem. So from there we can, when we come back, of course, we will proceed in full. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, all hail Biafra and um, lovers of freedom um, all over the world. Um, we greet you all. We bring um, greetings to you all with the name of Uputamono, Chukokika Biyama, Abasi, Olise, whatever you call it in the wonderful and the ancient language of the Biafran people. So, yeah, of course, um, we are here um with the person of um um sir philip Effian jr and um of course before we we'll proceed um we are going to introduce um to you everyone on your screen for you to be able um you know to 
to understand why we are here and the reason why we all got here. Okay, we have somebody. I have a. Uh, I'm a moderator and I have a co-moderator with me here, the person of Idudu Oviemono, and um, of course I'm going to be giving. Um, I'm going to be giving um, him the opportunity um, to introduce himself. And likewise, I also have the person of Tamano Tonye, area of Tamano Tonye. Um, we also have our mother, which I believe you all have been looking, where is Oni, where is Oni? Uh, Biafrans um, all over the world. I've been searching for her. Yeah, she's here with us on um, Coastal Biafran TV Live with our father as well, our father, the person of um, Sir Philip Avion Jr. I'm not going to do the introduction myself. I'm going to give the opportunity for our comrades to do the introduction before we forge ahead the rest of the, um, what we have today. So I'll be starting by the person of Idudu Viemono. Please Idudu, kindly um, introduce yourself by yourself. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's an honor and privilege to be here with uh, Sir Philip F. Young, the junior. It's a lifetime privilege. I'm so happy to be here. My name remains Idudu of Yamuno and Anisoko speaking Biafra in a place they call Delta State. But we are Biafra. And on behalf of the entire Isoko people, I am saying to Sir Philip Junior, Sir Philip F. Young, the junior. Okay, Nega Lowe, meaning that may God bless you for honoring our invitation to come and address the Biafra at large, worldwide, and especially the coastal region of Biafra land. Thank you very much. All oh, here, Biafra. Biafra, we hail thee. Of course, we are getting there gradually. We ask this person of um, Terminal to you. Please kindly take the mic and introduce yourself as a co moderator who will be moderating with us tonight. Take the mic, Terminal. Hey, um, good day, my people. Um, good evening from here. Uh, good day, uh, afternoon or uh, morning to wherever you may be, depending on your time zones. Uh, my name is Iria Wotamotoye. I am an Izon speaking Biafran. And um, it is my home, most humble pleasure to be here uh, with some of the greatest minds that I've ever come across in Biafra. And, um, Thank you so much for having me uh, moderate this uh, massacre with the rest of you comrades. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Area or Tamono Tonye. Um, I will quickly go to our mother, and um, yes, of course, um, she will be introducing herself by herself. Thank you very much. Only you can unmute yourself and you know kindly introduce yourself. Um, to so the people who have been waiting to see the person under the radio Biafra. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, glad to be here. And uh, also glad to be in this program with uh, uh, the son of uh, the first vice president of Biafra, who is uh, the son of uh, Philip Ephion, we appreciate the sacrifices that your father uh, uh, made for Biafra. Uh, I am Madame Annie Redouriche Erewa. Uh, my baptismal name is what you are seeing on that screen, but I introduce myself by the by my traditional name, which is Annie Redwish. And I am glad to be here. And uh, it's uh, thank you so much, uh, the host, uh, Onajite, and uh, Idudu, and um, um, Terminal Toy. I thank you all. So glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Oni. May God bless you and may your days be longer. Thank you very much for um, joining us this evening. Yeah, um, we will be bringing up um, our our father, um, the person of um, Sir Philip Effion Jr. Please, sir, kindly introduce yourself to the viewers 
all over the world right now. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, uh, my name is Philip Uko Effion. I'm both uh, an Ibibio man as well as an Ukwani man. Ukwani is wow. in Delta State. And um, I currently teach at, the at Michigan State University. I teach um, a range of humanities um, classes, even though I'm in theater studies. Uh, so that's what I'm currently doing now. And um, I, I think it's important to uh, take note of the fact that I'm one out of eight children. I am number five. And um, if my siblings who are not who are older than me or, or younger than me are not here, it is not because I am speaking for them. You know, there are various circumstances that either make it possible or not possible for people to be a part of, um, of, of a session like this. So I just wanted to make that clear that um, I am not outshining my siblings. Um, and when I speak, um, their spirit is here with me. So thank you. Thank you very, very much, sir. Uh, you know, like um, um, Oni has said, um, we really appreciate uh, the family the family of um, Sir Philip Ethion Jr. We, uh, we really appreciate the family for the great um, sacrifice that the family, you know, has um, given to the people of their friends all over the world. So um, before I will be, you know, dropping the mic, for the moderators um, today, you know, of course, um, the person of um, Sir Philip, Philip F. Young Jr. has introduced himself, and I will still use this opportunity to tell those who are watching us live and direct. I think um, some are watching on YouTube, Twitter, and um, as well on Facebook. So I will encourage us all to keep on sharing this very program. Share, share, share. And you know, invite other people to be a partaker of this because there are a lot of things that, in fact, that were there are a lot to learn um, this very evening. You know, from the real people of the coastal region of Biafra land. So um, I think um, I should go for the first question we have um, for today. You know, um, sir, um, we, we want you, you know to tell us. Um, whom um, um, Sir Philip Effion Jr. really is, you know. Of course, some of our people just wrote in the comment section that does this say he is from Kwane, and this is a, um, a um, um, Kwane guy. So they were they were very shocked. I will want you to you know try and uh, introduce yourself in full because um, I already have been seeing some kind of um, um, sentiment comment in the, in the in the program right now and some people you know for your first speech they are already amazed that oh he's from Kwane so please sir can you take the mic and introduce yourself in full thank you very much thank you uh, I'm I'm from I'm Ibibio that's my father's uh, ethnicity my mother is from Ukwani Ukwani in Delta State uh, some people say Kwali and um, I think it's important, and I've learned mainly from you young people, the importance of identifying all the ethnic identities that make you what you are. Because many of you introduce yourselves and you do that. So it's from you that I learned to do that. And I regret that most of my life I've not given recognition to, my other, to the other side of me that comes from my mother. Um, but let me say this, and I should have said this when, when I introduced myself at first, you have said very kindly how you honor my father, my family for what we've done. I am also very honored to be here and I'm very thankful. And at the end of the day, it just wasn't my father or my family, it was all of us. Whether you were there, if you weren't there, but your family was a part of it, you're a part of it because your spirit, your blood, is with those before you, whether they are your parents or your grandparents. So it is not enough for me to sit down here and take credit. You must also be given credit. And I do appreciate the love and the opportunity that you've given me to come out here and share this space with you. 
So I want to say thank you very much, but I hope I made it clear about where I'm from. Um, I don't believe in states, but because for the sake of uh, uh, just to make things easy, I, I will identify as a Kwaibom and Delta. And uh, with the Bibios uh, 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 coming from a Kwaibom, and some people say Kaibo, many people from Ukwani and Nyocha, all those places, they don't define themselves as Ikaibo. They define themselves as, you know, uh, coming from particular places or particular ethnic uh, locations, in spite of the fact that they have strong Igbo affiliations. So I hope that makes it clear as far as uh, introducing my, myself and my uh, ethnic makeup. Yes, sir, we do understand that. And, and um, thank you for giving us that background. And um, we're very, very grateful once again to have you here. So we would like to ask, um, perhaps can you tell us if you have, know or um, have any idea of the events that led up to, you know, the war? So if you can highlight, you know, the events for us that led up to the BIFAN genocide, sir. There are several factors you know i will i probably wouldn't get through all of them but we know that the fabrication the way nigeria was fabricated it was put together not by people who love us people who didn't know us people who didn't respect us they created those artificial boundaries and then lumped people together under a central authority but we are people who've always lived independently and so you put us under a central authority that now determines and tries to decide how we run our lives, how we control our resources. You know, they try to uh, uh, um, control our institutions and that would eventually create conflict because we would now begin to compete with one another. Whereas before, when we were not within these artificial boundaries, we traded with one another. On, another. We exchanged languages, we intermarried. Sometimes we had conflicts, but we usually made up because we continued to interact through trade and marriage, learning each other's languages. You see a lot of cultures across that region. You find Igbo, Igbo people who have the Ekwe society. You have Ibibio people who have Ekwe society. You have Efik people who have Ekwe society. That's just one example. So that was the main reason why that war happened. But it was aggravated by specific issues. One was the was the wrong, erroneous accusations of Igbos as being the the, the 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 cause of the first coup, or the ones who engendered and carried out that coup. Um, you know, some Igbos played a, a major roles, but you had other people. Even the governor, former governor of uh, uh, Benue Plateau, Atampara. He was a lieutenant. He was about 25 years old. That's not an evil person. Uh, uh, Ademo Yega is not an evil person. He participated in that coup. And then when we talk about the rank and file, the non-commissioned officers, a lot of them were from the north and different parts of the country. So that became a trigger to uh, now go after Igbos and start to massacre them, not only in the north, but mainly in the north. We should also remember that as we began to compete, we became territorial and we got into ethnic conflicts. Some people were aggravating uh, uh, the hatred. The former, um, um, the, 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 the premier of the North, uh, so, uh, Amadou Bello, for instance, there's a video of him expressing his absolute hatred for Igbos and that the fact that he didn't want them in the North. You know, this is a powerful man. He was spiritually or religiously powerful and politically powerful. So that was long before the first coup. So we need to realize that even though that first coup has been used as an excuse, that the hatred was already building up. And so the, the, it was convenient to use the first coup and then to use Decree 34, the unitary, I believe, a decree by uh, when Iransi was in power. But if you ask many people who went out and killed Easterners and Igbos, what decree for? 
34 was about, they probably couldn't tell you. So these were some of the factors. And then, of course, we understand that, that the governor of the Eastern region, um, Colonel later on, General Lojuku, asked fundamental questions. He was an Igbo man himself. The new government that came into power targeted Igbos. So naturally, he would be suspicious. He wouldn't feel comfortable around them. And so he asked questions. And he was the only one, the only individual in all of Nigeria who stood up for those people that were being massacred. So we need to give him credit for that. Now, thankfully, Ghana would organize a, a peace talks, which uh, uh, the governor participated in, and agreed to all the terms. And the terms were going to limit the power of the, of the central government or the federal government. But I think we know that they came back and reneged on that. And what we needed at that point was reassurance. That was not reassurance. And then to make things worse, they went ahead and created new states as well as East Central State for the Igbos without consulting the Igbos, without defining how they had you know, a, a, a demarcated those boundaries. And in the process, the one person that Igbos had looked up to up until that point, uh, uh, General uh, Ojuku was declared a non-entity and replaced by uh, an administrator, a civilian administrator, Asika. So all these continued to, the reassurance that the people needed was lost at that point. And so it was at that point that they felt like we have done all we need to do to find peace with this new uh, administration. And so the, the, the state of uh, 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 the, the country, the nation of Biafra was created. But even after it was created, there was still room for negotiations. And yet they declared war, called it police action. And the military arsenal that came uh, 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 upon Biafra was so huge. It hasn't been used against Boko Haram. It hasn't been used against the Fulani that are unleashing so much destruction to various parts of the country. And remember, the state of Biafra, you agree, you disagree with it, had not embarked on any kind of military operations. So negotiations would have been possible. But at this point, when the guns uh, started shooting, you know, when the bombs started landing, the guns were being used on us, the grenades, the rockets, we had no choice but to fight back. And um, that's what human beings do. You know, you're pushed to the wall. You don't just sit down there and watch yourself being destroyed. Remember that the lives of a lot of the people had already been destroyed in the North. And they came back home feeling that they could be safe at home. And so the message now was even in your own home, you won't be safe. And so we should understand why at that point people were so bitter and angry and decided enough is enough we're going to fight back thank you very much sir thank you okay um the person of idudo is coming in okay and um, just um coming with the um the what you have for our father here so just go ahead sir idudu. Uh, thank you very much uh once again it's a privilege to be here with uh the son of our hero, the, the first vice president of Biafra land and the second president of Biafra land. For those who are trying to, you know, antagonize the Biafra struggle to be an Igbo affair. And uh, it's a privilege to add to my learning, or should I say my book of record today, that uh, Sir Philip F. Yodi Jr. is also from Delta State, which I came from. And um, my question goes like this. Some few coasters are saying that General Ojuku, alongside with General Philip Effion, did not consult the entire coast before embarking to defend the people of Biafra land. I don't know if you have, should I say, information concerning that in details to also enlighten people who have those, uh, should I say, mindsets. And not just only that, 
they are also trying to Igbonize it, like the Biafra struggle is an Igbo affair. So my question is this. I believe your father is well read. He studied outside the country. That means his parents were ever where to do to send him to school to acquire knowledge. Also, the person of uh, our internal leader, Phil, uh, General Chukwe Meka Dumego Ochuku, they all study outside and they were not lacking because people would say that it's out of greed, but you never saw. They did it out of necessity to defend the people of Biafra. So, people who are trying, people who are trying in all means to make sure that the legacy of Sir Philip F. Young is swept under the carpet in aspect of trying to ignore the Biafra struggle to be an Igbo struggle. Whereas it was the consultant of the person of General Chukwe Meka Jumego Juku and the person of General Philip F. Young, it was under their leadership. So please, I would like you to address the entire world on that. Because the legacy of Sir Philip F. Young will never and can never be swept under the carpet or here Biafra. Okay, thank you for your question. Um, first of all, as a matter of fact, just, just to make a point about uh, my father's personal life, he was actually from um, a humble family and at some point had to uh, drop out of school and uh, registered as a GCE candidate from home and actually bought books, bought the syllabus and took that exam from home. And that is what qualified him after he passed that exam to go into the officer corps. Before then, he was he was he actually rose from the ranks. He, he went into the army as a private. But yes, you are right that at some point, you know, on gaining his uh, a, a GCE, he would have the opportunity to go abroad and get his military training and good education in places like Germany and and the United Kingdom and other places. Um, having said that, you know, it is <laughs> anybody, first of all, let people look at the makeup of what we have here today. Let look, people look at those who are in, interviewing me today. How many of them are Igbos? How, am I Igbo? You know, that is a fallacy. That whole thing that this was an Igbo, whatever. Unfortunately, some of our people are buying into it and are actually turning against Igbos for that reason. If you look at people that were killed during the second coup, uh, 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 Major um, Major Ekanem, Major Isong. Um, there's another name. There's 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 someone. Um, there, there was Major Rock. There was. Uh, so I'm trying to remember the name of someone from what is today the, the present River State, and many others that people don't want to focus on, because they want to make it seem as if it was just Igbos. Or look. Or what about the governor of the Western Region? Um, I'm trying to remember his name, the man that was, and if someone remembers his name, let, let me know. He was with uh, Ironsi when Ironsi was uh, abducted. The name will come back. Fajui, that's his name, yeah. Colonel Fajui, that's a Yoruba man that was killed. So the, 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 the attacks, you can say in many ways they were primarily against Igbos, but they were not against Igbos because Igbos are Igbos. They were against, they were against Igbos because what they thought Igbos represented. These are the people that will challenge and prevent our complete domination and ownership of power. That's how they saw the Igbos, as people who wanted to control everything and take over power. And so anyone they, 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 they felt was playing that, that role of trying to prevent them from gaining full power, they went after those people. That's why Fajui was killed. That's why there were attempts on my father's life. And my father had to flee from Kaduna in disguise and go to Lagos and eventually escape from Lagos to the east. Is he an Igbo man? No, my father can hardly make a, or could hardly make a sentence in Igbo. You look at the make, the, just the, the, the structure, the leadership of Biafra, the, uh, the, 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 the secretary to the government, Enyu Akban and Ibibio man as well. Uh, you look at uh, people who play diplomatic roles like uh, Mr. Kobara, I think he's an Ogoni man. Or think about the person who even came up with the name uh, Biafra, Chief of Pigo. Or think about one of the major propagandists in Biafra, Okokondem. Think about one of the greatest respected field commanders, Colonel Achibo. How many of these people are Igbos? You know, so it is ridiculous 
And that's how the Eastern government was on several levels. I agree, you know, with people who say, well, you know, uh, the Igbos occupied, you know, many key positions. That, that's, that's true, but not only the Igbos. You know, there were many others, some of whom I've mentioned, and the people I've mentioned were already in the Eastern government. There's uh, the, um, uh, uh, the late uh, Ekogin Ambasi, a lawyer. He was also quite significant in, in, in the Eastern region, uh, played a number of diplomatic roles before the war. And in the war, I think he headed the Anang province and, and was also a militia uh, officer. And a lot of these people were together in that body that came and demanded that it is time for us to break away. We're not wanted in this country. We need reassurance. We need safety. We're not getting it. And so we can't continue to exist in fear. We can't continue to exist in a situation where our lives are constantly destroyed. You know, I was a little boy in Enugu before the war. And that's where some of the earliest battles took place. And I remember people marching on the streets and they were singing, you know, we are Bia, France fighting for survival in the name of Jesus, we shall conquer. And I look, I remember those people. Sometimes we'll just march beside them. A lot of them were from a range of backgrounds. You could see traders there. You could see uh, uh, landlords. You could see teachers. So this nonsense about this thing being about the Igbos and the Igbo elite is crap. It's absolute crap. And it's, it's one of those distortions that people use not just to denigrate uh, Biafra, but to divide us as well. It's it's not working for me, and it never will. I hope I answered the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. You've really answered the question. But uh, before my uh, other comrades go for the uh, for the next question, uh, concerning what you were saying, you said uh, you see people. You know, I just want you to make this specifically. Uh, you said you see people on the street marching, singing, we are beer friends, marching for our freedom. Now, I want you to make it very clear shortly, um, who are the people singing? Are they the Igbos? Are they the Costaners? Who are these people you are talking about? Look, the, the, if, if think about the fact that the mayor of Enugu was a northerner. He was a Hausa man before all this nonsense happened. If the mayor was a Hausa man, what are the chances that you had people from everywhere in Enugu, not just because it was the capital of, of the Eastern region, but because of what Enugu represented as a commercial center. It attracted people from everywhere. It was, it was ahead of its time. There were a lot of businesses that people brought from outside. So a lot of the people I'm talking about you know, uh, I mean, I, I've, I've mentioned the leadership of, of Biafra. If you think about the leadership, it will tell you about what the rest of the people, uh, uh, what the what the what the, the demographics of the of the of Enugu or the Eastern Region was. You know, there is no way you would have, say, the secretary being an Ibibio man, without Ibibio people being in Enugu. You know, Ibibio people were everywhere you know, as well as people from other ethnic nationalities. And when you listen to the people marching, sometimes they would sing in Igbo, sometimes they would sing in English because some of the people marching could not uh, sing in Igbo. They were learning Igbo, but they had not mastered Igbo. That's why you had a lot of some of the songs in Biafra being sung in English, because that was, that was for the sake of people who couldn't speak Igbo very well. So who were those people? That's my question. So, you know, I think that answers the question. You know, it, it, these people were from a of range of, of, of demographic, uh, uh, you know, if you look at the demographics, they were from a range of backgrounds. So again, that, that, that thing about Igbo, Igbo, Igbo is nonsense. Unfortunately, I've even been to conferences where people who should know better come and sing that same uh, theme and, and uh, it's doing us a, a disservice. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for that, um, you know, enlightenment. Um, you know, before I go back to my um, 
um, uh, co-moderators. Again, you know, your father was, uh, you know, the first um, vice president and the second president of Biafra. Due to your position as a son of our former head of state, you know, we want you to, you know, try to highlight uh, um, some of the events that actually happened during the war that is not yet in the public, you know, as a son um, to, 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 to such um, 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 uh, pers personality, you know, there are some things that is not yet in the public that, you know, you can have access to. And, you know, there's something that I love most. I did not really inform you about this earlier. When I, there's a, there's one of your video that I actually viewed where you are, you know, bringing down some kind of old map, old caps of our great um, general, Sir Philip Ephion. You know, bringing out all these things to, you know, I was, I was very touched and, you know, I was, I was like, wow, all these things are still, are still existing. So what are the things you think that are not yet in the public domain that may be helpful to educate our people on um, how they suppose or on how they, 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 they need to perceive the struggle of Biafra? Well, for a long time, this story, there were efforts to sweep this story under the carpet. You know, I met a friend of mine, uh, there was a Yoruba friend of mine in, in Nairobi, Kenya, that called me once and said, I want to learn about this war because I studied history in Nigeria. I studied history and I can tell you about the Second World War. I can tell you about the First World War. I can tell you about the Vietnam War. I can tell you about the American Civil War, but this war that happened in my backyard, I don't know anything about it and we never talked about it. So there has been that effort. And even though the story is gradually coming out, some of the bitter things, the details that you're asking about have not yet come out. One of them we, we now know is the uh, Asaba massacre. And the Asaba massacre, I have a book that's about 300 pages. When people talk about it, they just talk about it in two sentences. But when you go into that book and you see the details, you know, it is amazing that Asaba was able to recover. They say about 700 young men and, 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 and boys, but there were probably more than that. At a point, their bodies were on the streets, were being eaten by vultures. And because a lot of homes lost uh, their men and boys, the girls and the women were vulnerable and the soldiers had a field day raping them. Some people have said, well, the soldiers married them. <laughs> you know, it, it, it depends on how you want to look at the story. First of all, for a lot of those uh, young women and uh, girls, if they didn't submit to the soldiers, the soldiers would take them. So they put this uh, whole thing about, you know, the, the soldiers would now pretend as if they married them and say the girls said yes. And they would ask the girls, do you, uh, you want to marry this soldier? Of course she can't say no. They'll either rape her or they'll kill her. So, and, and, and Chinua Achebe, the great author in his book, Another Country, writes about this part of the war that we don't know, that people don't talk about a lot, the violation of our girls and women. He talks about how after the war, when the Nigerian soldiers, you know, they were completely... Uh, they completely dominated everywhere. You know, Biafrans were completely at their mercy. And sometimes they would go into a home and take out the, the, the girls, the daughters. And for weeks, the families wouldn't see them. They would take them out and use them as sex slaves. These are some of the details we need to talk about. You know, um, so, and then, although people talk about uh, Asaba, there are many other instances where civilians were lined up and killed. I have a friend, I believe he's from Abakeliki. That's why he joined the army to fight, because he witnessed the killing of his people. And he was a boy, even though he was a boy, he was so distraught, so angry, he went and, and, and enlisted um, uh, uh, and joined uh, the, the army. So there are many instances like that. We need to... to 
put together the figures of, of, of people that were lost in, in, in air raids targeting civilians. One of the worst was in uh, uh, Aguleri, I believe that's where it was, where in a single day, about 500 civilians uh, lost their lives. They used to go to the marketplaces. As a matter of fact, once during the war, when we were in Umwaya, my mother and the former and the wife of the former head of state, Mrs. Ironsi, went to the market in Umwaya. You know how big our markets are, and that's where the plane came and was bombing. Fortunately, they came out, you know, with their lives. But the attacks on civilians, you know, many people will tell you that it was war. But wars have rules. The reason why we condemn Hitler is not because he fought against American soldiers or British soldiers, but it is what he did to civilian Jews. That's his crime. So the, these crimes against civilians, we need to unmask them a little bit more. We need to dig deeper and, uh, and, 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 and expose them, and not just expose them as they happened during the war, but after the war as well, especially the rape on girls and women. So there's a lot. I probably haven't touched on a fraction of the atrocities, but that, that's probably a place to start from. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you very, very much. That is more, you know, that is very deep. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, let me quickly bring in uh, uh, my co-moderator, the person of Idudu, to release what is in uh, what is with him over there. Please, Idudu, take the floor. Yeah. Um, uh, you will be here with me, uh, sir, uh, because the question I'm about to throw uh, is it looks like we've asked it already before, but uh, it has to just conjoin with uh, the question I want to ask right now. And please, you just try as much as possible to address it in your own way. And now, I, I uh, uh, the question goes like this. For decades now, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Mazinan de Kano, has been doing some great underground job for the unity of Biafra people before he founded this great movement called IPOB, which means the indigenous people of Biafra. Since then, the world has been discussing about Biafra, including those who swore not to do so, like the Nigeria media and, in fact, the world at large right now, they do. Uh, despite the great awareness, few people most, most especially, most especially the so-called elite who are benefiting and getting fatter from the misery and suffering of their own people are not trying to labor the struggle and Igbo struggle. Despite the fact that in the IPOB structure of today, I can confirm to you that the coastal Biafra are the ones occupying some of the most important and decision-making positions. What is your take in this? And what is your message to the people at life and Biafra at life, the Kosana at life? Like some of the, like some of the, uh, the, the, the position I, I can give example, like the person of the African rep, which happened to be an Izoma, uh, 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 the Lagos State Coordinator, which is also a principal officer, an Isoko man. Our mother here, Madam uh, Arewa, who is also a member of the DOS. If I didn't go on and on and on and on. So I would like you to address it in your way because I know I've told this question before, but I, you just have to go with some other questions that we are on board. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And, and maybe I should have said this earlier, but um, if you look at the, the, the generational representation here, I, I should have acknowledged uh, Madam Josephine, who obviously saw that war in a way that many of us will not witness it. You know, people have tried to make it seem as if young people are just, you know, impulsive and they're just wild and stuff. But here is an elderly woman that must be respected. What is it that would drive her? What, what is it that would drive her to feel like self-determination is something that we must continue to, uh, uh, we must continue to aspire for? You know, it's not about young people only it's not about any group of people it's not about evils it's about self-determination and um, if you look at most of us here we come from lands that provide nigeria with majority of its wealth and people have called us minorities 
and we're tired of that. By the way, you also have oil on Igbo land, you know. So th let's not uh, let let's 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 make that fact clear because it's it's also being used against the the Igbos, the fact that they want to come and take other people's oil. But I say all of this to say basically that I understand, and it was bound to happen that people would rise up. My father said it. He said, if you don't treat these Biafrans well, their children will rise up. So anybody that is acting as if they are surprised, they're either ignorant or they don't want to face reality. Now, one of the things I, I praise IPOB and, and other pro-Biafran groups for, because I know there have been others, is that they have finally brought this story to light. They played a key role so they must be commended for doing that. Otherwise, nobody would care about the, uh, the tragedy of our history. You know, a lot of people talk about Chimamanda's uh, Half of the Yellow Sun as bringing the story to light. In a sense, yes. But even her book received the attention it did, partly because of Probia from uh, 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 groups and struggles. What's wrong with now, now, people can afford to disagree with you. That's fine. In every society, even in our families, we disagree. But people don't have a right to silence you, to condemn you, to judge you, or to kill you. Because in every democracy, you should have the right to express yourself, and you have the right to disagree. What's most important is that we listen to one another, and we find a way to find a common ground. When you talk about the elites, whether it's within uh, parts of, 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 of our various states there in the former Eastern region, you know, and others that have made it have positions at the federal level, we need to recognize that you have to be strong to be exposed to so much <laughs> perks and privilege and stand for the truth. Very few people do that. And, and, and when people do that, they generally lose those positions or they're not appointed to those positions. Now, it doesn't mean we shouldn't be appointed to positions of authority, but when we're appointed to those positions, we need to recognize that we are representatives, not of ourselves, but of the people. So when the people rise up and begin to agitate like IPOB and other groups, what you need to do is give them a space. What a true leader does is create space for dialogue. That is not the case. And that is my problem. It doesn't mean that we have to all be in agreement. It doesn't mean that we all have to believe in the same thing. But we have to believe in the importance of the survival of humanity. And that's what should bring us together. It, it bothers me a lot when I see attacks and conflict amongst ourselves. You know, I hear of, 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 of uh, 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 say, Ohaneze and, uh, you know, members of IPOB and things like that. It really breaks my heart because in reality, we have nothing to be fighting against ourselves for. We should be finding a way to connect in a meaningful way. But like I've said, we're not good at listening. The way Nigeria has a culture of violence, if you don't like it, you either destroy it or you kill it or you condemn it or you abuse it. So there's little room for dialogue. We say we're in a democracy, but half the time our democracies are ruled by former dictators whose mindsets have not changed. And they bring that same mindset into these issues. So don't be surprised when soldiers are sent to attack civilians. That's, that's the culture that we have created for ourselves. But look at what's happening. Now that culture of violence is going viral. And there are very, very few people who are immune to that culture. Many people who didn't care have to care now because the violence is coming to them. If you look at the situation that Nigeria is at. So if we can return to a space and create a space where we say, you know what? We disagree, but we'll listen. And we'll find a way to even if we disagree to disagree respectfully and in the process think of our larger the larger survival of our, our humanity 
you know, that for me would be a good place to start from. Unfortunately, we have this culture that, and I don't know how easy it will to break this culture of condemning, of killing, of flogging, of brutalizing people when they rise up and say what you don't believe in or what you don't agree with. And let me also just say this. Another major problem we have is a lot of us are selfish hypocrites, including people that are touting themselves as freedom fighters. Where were these freedom fighters when the violence was happening to other people? A lot of them are only speaking now because the violence has come to them. So we must come to that point where the problem of the job person is my problem. The problem of the, uh, uh, of, of the ethnic person is my problem. The problem of the evil person is my problem. The problem of the elderly is my problem. The problem of young people is my problem. But we're not like that. We generally don't care about other people's problems until the problem comes to us. Unfortunately, the violence is now coming to people who refuse to appreciate our tragedy and violence, and maybe they understand how we felt and how we are still feeling. Thank you very much. Okay, let me quickly bring in um, my sister, Aria Otamonotui. Please um, do the need. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I would like to ask Oni on her take on um, our conversation so far. Um, she has listened um, to quite some of the questions that um, uh, our father, uh, Philip F. Young, the jun um, junior, has you know answered. So I'd like to ask her on her take um, for his own perspective so far and her own perspective uh, on the matter. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Um. I like when I speak, I speak from experience. I use my experience to let people see and uh, realize and become educated. I actually, I was born in the East, me and my sisters. And um, my father, who is an Ichekuri, because based on why I'm going to use my experience uh, is to let you all know, all the listeners know, that whether Ichekuri, Urobo, how do we look at ourselves? When I was growing up, I know, I, I know I'm Eastern region because I was born in the East. My father, who is an Ichekiri, my mother, who is an Urobo, uh, my father was of the education, and my mother was a trader. So my father was stationed in the East. Please take note of what I'm saying now, just mark that point. He was stationed in the East as, you know, because he's of the education. And he was transferred from uh, one, one part of the, uh, the, you know, from either Nietzsche to Enugu to Umwahia. So I was born in Enugu. My, uh, the twins were born in Onitsha. My elder sister was born in Umwahia. It was only my youngest sister who passed away uh, in 1999 who was born in Edo after my father had retired before even Nigeria was ever, you know, independent. So I was very little when my father retired and went back and then went to Edo to settle. So all I know is that my mother spoke Igbo very fluently. She recognizes the different accent uh, in the Igbo, uh, Igbo because it was, you know, uh, wherever they transfer my father to, uh, that's where she goes. And so we came in, all we know is uh, we, Igbo's, Edo, Izon, uh, Ishan, you know, 
I never know any other, any other, you know, interact with any other, other than uh, it was during the, when this Nigeria also, uh, independence, before I started seeing whether all this uh, pull on me, they look so strange, uh, they will hold like a, and be walking in Benin. Uh, when I was enrolled in uh, school, because I was so little when my uh, father went back, uh, you, uh, you know, you have to use your hand, uh, your right hand above your head to reach your ears to, uh, to enroll in school. So I started with standard school. Uh, the driving at that time was left hand. We are Igbo, we are all Eastern region. That's how we introduce, that's how we, we uh, Eastern region. You know, and we, uh, they said the sun rises in the east and the sun sets in the west, you know. So this is what I understood as I was growing up. You know, worry, when I see worry now, I, my heart is broken. Because when I was little, you know, you have the Ethiop River and the Pontu will be coming. And, uh, you know, you cross with Kenu because I attended uh, Okotiabo Grammar School. After, it's Okotiabo Grammar School now. But the school at that time is Zix Academy, Sapele, you know, and that school uh, was uh, uh, started by uh, Festus, Pa Festus Okotiabo. And unfortunately, now, uh, you know, I used to be so proud of that name, but after no, knowing the role he played, it's so disappointing. But uh, by, uh, you know, Namdi and uh, Azikwe, they started that school, though the name has changed now to Okotiabo Grammar School in Safele. So just take note of all this. You, nothing like uh, one foreign name, uh, whether I know we are working with Odudua now, but I, I never came in contact with Yoruba at any point in time, even when in school, we do what you call a uh, traditional cultural dance. It is always Igbo, Ishekiri, Urobo, Izan. You know, these are the uh, uh, Do, Isha, these are the dance that we, that, uh, you know, uh, we dance for annual dance cultural in school, you know, nothing like, uh, with all due respect here, yeah, nothing like Yoruba dance, nothing like uh, Fulani or Awusa or all those places because we never came in contact. My mother was going to Onicha for business, okay? So everything was within the Eastern region, within the Eastern region. So that should tell anybody that the Eastern region is the bite of Biafra and it's Biafra. So anyone that will be saying that Igbo is the is uh, Biafra and that all that is a bogus lie is part of the divide and conquer that they came up with. Actually, I started coming in, con uh, coming to know about Yoruba or Fulani is when the independence, when the uh, Nigeria independence was about to start, and uh, you know, the, around the 1960, my father died August 1960 before Nigerian independence. Okay, in Edo, and um, a lot of things changed. Uh, during this time, everything now turned from uh, even the left hand drive turned to right hand drive. And, uh, you know, because there was a time it was left hand drive. And then during this independence, standard school changed from standard to primary. All these are changes that occurred uh, in the course of this whole uh, uh, Nigerian, whatever, you know. And uh, how do we know when I was little? How do I know I'm in worry? I'll tell you. You see the streets in worry? It has light. Because when my uncle comes to pick us and we are coming to do holiday, the minute we see light, you know, the road, 
and uh, you will see light really shining on the road and we say ah we don't enter worry oh now worry with this now you know so there are so many lucrative things that were happening all have died in the course of this okay so i just want to use this to share that anybody who will be talking about the south south and niger and uh, whether na royo niger uh, company delta and all that all those are ne were never 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 mm -mm, at all not when i was growing up okay during the war when the war came i was now in uh, you know i was in in high school or secondary school as we call it in sapele and, and you know we didn't know you see we were very biased i must say this we were very biased because the way they did it they did it in such a way it is now i came to understand that the the uh, the propaganda that was used to uh, hate propaganda against the evil was to victimize the evil. We knew ourselves as Eastern region. We didn't really know that the Eastern region is by of Biafra. And so we didn't know it's Biafra. So we don't look at ourselves that we are Eastern region. So what they did was they made us to think they made us to think that the word Biafra is a bad word. They made us to think that the word Biafra is a rebel word. And then they made us to think that they used the word Biafra to stigma. It became a stigma type of name against evil people. So we didn't know this. I came to know this, and I must say that the way they did it, they did it in such a way that they made us to hate Igbo. I am saying this because I'm a witness and I was a part of it. You know, they made us to hate Igbo people that myself talking right now to you all. Honest to God, I raise my hand here. Honestly. I wouldn't want to sit with an evil person. You know, I will not want to sit with an evil person. That's how much they bias my mind. I mind the poisonous, you know, to hate evil so much. But the people we grew up with, where I was born and raised, my mother was going to our nature to do market, come back. It was now we all the interact. Ebos now we get for neighbors for church now Igbo people now we all they do things together with Robo in Shakiri and all you know suddenly suddenly when they come start this uh, when Nigeria comes start now everything is changed the next thing now is my mother wasn't even going to Onitsha anymore to trade you know now now Lagos now she will go. She usually will go to Anisha, come back the same day. Now she will go to Lagos, spend two days before she will come and all this. Many businesses changed. Many businesses were taken away. Uh, you know, so there were many things. So anybody, anybody exactly. who will Thank say, you. excuse me? No, go ahead, Mama. No, go, go ahead, ahead with me. Oh, thank you. Anybody who I'm will not say not. that Biafra, uh, Eastern region, Naibo, now the deceive why they come deceive us. Because I was born in the east, uh, in uh, uh, in uh, in Enugu, now they born me as a little child, you know. And uh, now Eastern as the uh, peoples, now we all they do things together. They can't do them in such a way that uh, uh, to make them look like, say, Igbos now be Eastern. And now, <laughs> and you know, because I was little and I was growing up and uh, uh, all those thoughts wasn't coming. It is now. And I so thank our leader, His Excellency Mazi Unamdi Khan that has come to open our eyes.
Now I can't know now, say, Eastern region, now all of us, all of us now be Eastern regions. All of us now be part of Biafra. All of us now be Biafra. So anybody, whether they talk about Niger Delta and all that garbage, and all that nonsense, excuse the expression, all that, uh, uh, you see that they don't know what the heck they are talking about, or they are part of the Nigeria and trying to come up with divide and conquer. Let Thank me you very much. Thank you, so much <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Oni. Um, I think, um, uh, let me bring in um, uh, my sister, Tamna to to do the next book. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much, Oni, for um, sharing some of your experiences with us. Um, very, you. very treasured. Um, so I would like to ask, um, F. Young, um, may I ask, sir, um, in, due to your own knowledge, have, was there any altercation or any face of um, either before the war, during or after the war be, um, between our internal um, Dimo Dimebo Tuku and your father? Mm. Thank you. Well, let, before I say that, let me just comment, <laughs> Madam Josephine. I, I like where she veered up veered up into pigeon english saying that they deceive where they can't deceive us you know you know everything we do with evil people we chop with them we sleep with them we do business with them we marry themselves you know so thank you so much uh um uh, uh, uh madam i really appreciate your experience it is invaluable um and we'll continue to learn from you um, do you mind, um, Tamana, Tonya, before I just uh, answer that question, let me say some things that I think are very important here. You know, in addition to what uh, Madam Josephine has said, let's remember that if you went to Enugu at a point, I don't know if things have changed. You had an Aquabio street. You had an Imoke street. You know, that's how we lived. Why would Aquabio street be there except that there was a presence of Anang and Ibibio people? that were respected and that were part of the leadership of the Eastern um, region. And um, let's also remember that part of the struggle, which I, I you know, but I think it's good to reiterate these things for those listening. We produce the oil, but is there anybody here that can truly say, I've gained from the wealth of the oil produced on my land? No. I lived in Port Harcourt and, and, and for a while, at a point as a young person, we used to go into those rural areas, you know, looking for where we we'll get good uh, fish pepper soup. And you see the waterways all brown. Crops couldn't grow anymore, you know. So this is, let people understand that the battle that people are fighting, they wouldn't have to fight them if there were solutions. And I usually don't do this in sessions like this, but I thought I should, I, sh I should point that out and point out the fact, even though Madame has talked about how we were interconnected, we also believed in connecting with people beyond the East. A lot of the Easterners that came back as refugees after they were massacred could not even speak Hebrew. Many of them could speak the dominant language of the North, which was Hausa. A lot of them learned Igbo only when they came back. So let, let people go and think about that. So sorry, uh, <laughs> Tom and Tonya, as far as my father and, um, and uh, General Ojuku, ironically, Ojuku's mother and my grandmother, my mother's mother, actually knew each other long before the war. They knew each other. They were friends in Zaria. Because my, my mother's mother was a businesswoman, and I believe uh, Ojuku's mother was probably a businesswoman as well. Um, so it's, it has nothing to do with the war, but I'm just saying it's, it's, it's an interesting coincidence. Now, my, my father actually joined the war before Ojuku and rose through the ranks. Ojuku came in with a master's degree. Um, so my father was actually a little ahead of him, but you know, the, at some point they were all colonels together. And um, the camaraderie in the army at that time was remarkable. There was nothing about who was a Yoruba officer or who was a, 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 an Ijo officer or who was an ethic officer. It was really a family. And uh, my father tells the story of the first officer 
left an Uboma, an Igbo man who everybody was just, all Nigerian officers looked up to him or they weren't yet the officers. He was the first officer, but they all aspired. They looked at him and they were, you know, they were, they were all inspired is what I meant to say. Like one day we'll be like this man. Now, during the war, not before the war, as should be expected, you know, when people talk about disagreements between my father and Ujuku, let's think about our families. Sometimes we disagree with our brothers, our sisters, our wives, our husbands, our parents. It doesn't mean that the efficacy of the family, that the principles on which the family is built is completely lost. Of course, there were times when the leadership of Biafra were in disagreement, oh, should we do it this way? Should we do it that way? And sometimes it happened between my father and, and, and General Ojuku. But don't forget that General Ojuku during the war was his boss, so he never insulted him because there would be consequences, of course. So they disagreed and he disagreed, but disagreed respectfully with, with, uh, with uh, General Lujuku. And um, people have tried to highlight some of those disagreements and make it seem as if Biafra was dysfunctional, you know, or this shows that Biafra was rubbish or whatever. Look, listen, there's disagreement. In Nigerian government right now, there are disagreements. You go to our churches, there are disagreements. You go to our businesses, there are, bus there are disagreements. So it would be unusual if there were no disagreements. There were disagreements because they're human beings. But the most important thing is that they firmly believed in the right of the people to be protected and for the self-determination of the people. That is the outstanding thing that they believed in and that's what the focus should be on, not in the in, in the disagreements. You know, you I disagree with my uh, my older brother, and then you highlight that and make it seem as if our family is nonsense. No, we disagree, and that way we grow. That you know, I disagree with my brother, but I still love my brother to death. My brother is still my family. If my brother is in need, I'll give my brother. If I'm in need, my brother will still give me. You don't just completely condemn a family because of disagreements. Disagreements are part of human nature. And um, so, yes, you did have them, but the respect remained. And like I said, the absolute belief and the agreement that they had the right to secure the safety of the people and to struggle for their freedom is something that, that, never, that, 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 that bonded them, you know, completely. You know, so, so the, the, the disagreements here and there, you know, that, that's irrelevant. That's how people talk about the disagreement between Eyo Ita, Professor Eyo Ita and, uh, and Dr. Aziki, where I make it seem as if uh, Igbo people and, and ethnic people, you know, were quarreling. No, that's a, that's a disagreement between two politicians. You know, let it be, you know. So I don't know if I answered the question, um, Tamano, and I'm, I'm sorry that I went off at first and started and talked about other things that I thought were relevant. Thank you very yes, much, sir, course, you did. Thank you very much, sir. You, you did. Um, let me quickly use this opportunity, you know, to bring in uh, my comrade, uh, comrade Dudu Viemono, to, um, you know, to unleash what he has with him. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, very soon we'll be, we'll be opening our lines and we'll be giving the viewers the opportunity um, to throw questions um, to our father here and even our mother um, uh, because... Um, there are a lot of people who have been waiting for this time. So there will be a lot of calls coming in and um, we are going to present the number to call as, um, as soon as possible uh, so that we will not um, take much of um, the time of our, uh, of our father here with us. So um, we do the can you please just come in and take the mic and do the next call. Thank you. Unmute yourself. Thank you very much. I'm so sorry because I'm trying to calculate a lot of things. Um, my questions go like this, sir. Uh, we have um, we have first class we have first class communication with our people in the coastal region, most especially the ordinary people from all nationalities in the coast. Most of them have embraced the struggle, but some of them are afraid to identify with us in the open. What message do you have for them, especially the Akwaibo people, the Ibibio, 
and of also you know your mother side which we say our in-law and also entire coastal biafran and also the entire biafra i will say so sir please address this issue and also encourage them in your own way those who are afraid to identify with us in the you know who are afraid to take the bull by the horn thank you very much sir i think i think what you should be most con concerned about is people identifying with you ideologically maybe not with names because there are some people that are going to say they don't want to use the name Biafra. It may not be agreeable to you, but you need to respect them. And, you know, the labels, we can emphasize on the labels eventually. But the most important thing, as far as I'm concerned, is the ideology. We need to convince and understand that we have a common struggle. And that struggle is the mismanagement of our resources. We're being impoverished. We're being denied power. We're de being denied the control of our institutions. We're being dominated. And we're being made to feel insecure in our own lands. I think that's the message that should go out. A lot of people and the vast majority of people, including people from, from, from you know, whether it's Delta or Aquaibum, and Aquaibum, not just the BBOs, you have the Oran people, you have the Afik people move. And then if you go up to Cross River, you even have a lot more, you know. Um, a lot of these people are in the same struggle with you. They may just not be using the same channel or the same rhetoric, the same language you're using. So I think a lot has to do with revisiting the language we use so that we can, and it wouldn't take too much, I don't think, to convince ourselves that our struggles are similar. The vast majority of our people are hardworking people, but we don't have channels with which to express and explore our skills and creativity, and so many of us are stifled. You know, we need to understand that that struggle is the same from one end of, 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 of the eastern region to the other and even across the country. So for me, it is the rhetoric and we can and, and we can begin to welcome or engage people who may also be in the same struggle, but have slightly different opinions. OK. Uh, we can't be rigid, in other words, is what I'm saying. We can't be rigid and say it has to be like this, and if it's not like this, nothing else works. We have to be more open. You know, look at, like I said, look at the people here. They've said this is Igbo people. How many of you are Igbos? When General Ojuku uh, died, someone flew me from uh, Nairobi, Kenya, to Georgia in the United States to uh, attend an event. That was an Ibibio man like myself. So people ideologically are already uh, prepared for this struggle. But let us give more room for uh, flexibility and allow people to come in with different labels and maybe slightly different views of how we need to go. But the, the struggle is the same struggle. And if we can emphasize and get that message across, I think we'll begin to grow. I really think so. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, sir. Before I hand over the microphone to the other comrade, uh, I would like to, you know, throw a little uh, light on what you have just said and your answer to my question uh, in terms of giving, uh, you know, rooms for different view and opinion when it comes to the struggle. Yes, of course, we have been doing that. We have not only anchored the, this project on just uh, on resource, uh, you know, taking uh, using our resource for our people and all that. We, in fact, one of the major, you know, should I say, a point of view we're having is in terms of security, justice for the people. Like when you look at what the Fulani are doing in our land today, the raping, killing of our mothers, sisters, wives in their farmland where they are, where they are doing their farm work, you know, and, you know, using their cattle to do opal grazy, destroying our plantains, cassava yams, and potatoes. These are in fact, we are not even talking about even the oil spillage yet. We are not even talking about, uh, you know, you know, we have not gotten the oil money yet. We are talking about even in our own poor state of trying to manage our agriculture. These are some of the things that we are giving to the open, to the public, 
so that they can also know some of the things that you know we that 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 some of the injustice that we are having in our land so and we also give open rooms like for example you know if you want to debate like Mazina the Kano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra said that you know Biafra may come and join come if you have any grievances bring your grievances and they will be attended to if you don't like the name can we you know achieve what we are doing and at the parliament we can settle all these things even even flag issue of flag and anything if you have grievances can we work together after working, you know, in the, we made decision in parliament. We can change, we can amend constitution. So I just want to leave it there. Thank you very much, sir. And I will okay. hand the microphone to Onajite. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Jite, if you don't mind, let me just commend uh, Idudu for what he has said. You know, I agree with you. And I wasn't accusing you of not doing that. But I think it needs to be done more. And yeah. don't forget you have enemies. You are doing it, but nobody's hearing it. They want to exactly. hear only what they want to hear, you know? Exactly. And, and so you need to get that message out uh, a little bit more. Communication is, is extremely important. I ag I'm completely in agreement with you. And people, when people want to demonize you and destroy you, they will find the worst that they can find about you and disseminate that information. And I understand that, you know? So I'm completely in agreement with you. And the other thing I should have said is wisdom. Remember, if the Fulani are doing all these things and they're getting away with it, why? You need to know that there are some serious powers that are behind them and that are encouraging them. I'm not afraid to say it. Otherwise, why should they get away with all this nonsense and nobody's even defining them as a terrorist group, which is what they are? You know. So at some point when you are dealing, coming up against powers like that, it's good to take a step back and say, what are the options available to us? Do we go against them blow for blow, gun for gun, word for word? You might have to come up with other strategies. But thank you for that, for enlightening me. I do appreciate the information. Thank you very thank much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. And um, I also thank you very much. We do the Viemono. Okay, before I will be bringing uh, my sister, Eria Otamono to you because we are about coming closer to the end of the program. So um, as we're doing that, I will paste um, the, the, the number to call for this program. And uh, as you're calling, the uh, uh, pasting the number, of course, we'll be receiving calls from every angle. And um, there's something I want you to, uh, the viewers to understand. Today is um, the, the, the 13th day of, um, of um, June, 2021. The time now is 8.26 p.m. Or should I say 7.26 7 p.m. Biafran land time. So which means um, we are live and we are direct. In case you come across this program, maybe somebody is streaming it live, you should know that, okay, this is when exactly they did this program. So now, uh, of course, I'll be opening our lines and we'll be receiving calls. But our caller do interrupt us which will be interrupted during as you're explaining or um, educating our people on the question thrown to you. So um, we will have a caller and we interrupt you and you can as well address the caller while you're also addressing the question being thrown to you. Thank you very much, Iria Otamano, can you please take the mic? Yes, thank you very much, Asawa Igo. Um, so I'd like to throw this question to um, Sir Philip F. Young. Um, sir, um, we have the idea or we feel that you are based abroad. Um, you kindly um, correct us if we're wrong. And we also feel like your siblings are also based you know, overseas. We'd like to ask maybe why you are not in your fatherland <laughs> and um, no more reasons for that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Um... First of all, being in my uh, fatherland is not synonymous with, um, with patriotism. I can live in my fatherland and, uh, and destroy, participate in destroying my fatherland. Indeed, a lot of the destruction that's un being unleashed is being unleashed by people who reside there. Um, many of us actually contribute more, give more from outside. Um, the other thing is, and um, 
remember my name is is Philip F. Young. I'm a junior. And ever since that war ended, I've been made to feel ostracized in that country. You know, it's not something I plan to come and say, but this question has come up. So at some point, I really didn't care whether I stayed there or not, because I felt like I was still being perceived as a Biafran living in Nigeria. I had many experiences. I've been denied scholarship. I remember my father, and it's not just me, my family, my father trying to contest election eight years after the war, and he wasn't allowed to because of his role in the war. So I came to that understanding that I would never become the best that I can become in Nigeria. But in spite of that, I still continue to give my best. There's nothing on record to show that I participated in rigging an election, in, uh, in planning a coup. I've never stolen a penny of government money. I've never uh, received a bribe or given a bribe to anybody. When I was a lecturer at the University of Calabar, I never sold uh, uh, handouts to students. I never threatened a female student and said, have sex with me, otherwise I'll fail you. In other words, I've always been a good citizen, but never felt like I was at home. I'm here because of a scholarship. The scholarship was called the Fulbright Scholarship, and it was given to me. I didn't even apply for it. I didn't apply for it. I was nominated for that scholarship when I was at the University of Calabar as, as a young lecturer. I was nominated by my uh, uh, by the vice chancellor, who wasn't, who was a northerner, and he nominated me because of my portfolio, what I had achieved, and the, I got that scholarship and came to the United States. If Nigeria had anything to do with that decision, I would never have gotten that scholarship. It was the United States, and I never went to the embassy. They got my uh, visa for me. They organized everything, paid for me to come out here. Otherwise, I would never have left because I did not have the means to leave. So let people know, because many times people think when you leave Nigeria, you're running away. I wasn't running away. I was given this on a platter of gold. And I was given it at a time that I was getting very frustrated. But like you know, and uh, other people who lived uh, in the Eastern region or were former Biafras, you know, we had to overcome so many obstacles to survive and many are still doing that. So I welcomed that opportunity. And even well, after I graduated, I still came back. Okay. Um, sir, back. sir, we have been interrupted by our callers. Sorry. So um, of course, you, we, we, we really uh, um, love that, you know, um, the explanation you just gave concerning that. And of course, we truly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, we have a caller on the line right now. Hello, caller, what is your name? And where are you calling from? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the same thing I have had in my life. My name is Brian Daniel. I am calling you from the United States of America. Okay, Mar uh, Mazda Bright Daniel, please. You have just two minutes um, to ask your question. Thank you, God bless you. My question is to our father. Please, my number one question to you is this. Why is it that at the mention of the name, they are right? The face of people who talk, hatred, envy, jealousy, merit will exist at that particular point that you mentioned in Africa. Because I can remember flying from Kenya to the United States, putting on a Japan and the people around me, all of them turned, and they, I think the environment was not good again. That's my number one question. My number two question is this. With the very great in the speech, the Eastern, the Hebrews, the lesson. But can you tell us what is that thing that we do that we don't know, which they always reflect? What was I want to know? You are the father to us. I will say to you, what, is there anything you knew that happened there, which they always reflect on to? Hello, caller. Hello, caller. I don't think um, they are hearing you clearly because your line is not clear. Um, but the the, 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 the 
your line is fainting. Your line is fainting. I don't think it can help that. But um, I think I grabbed one of his questions. Um, the question was that, um, why is it that at the mention of Biafra, uh, there will be this kind of changing of attitude towards the Eastern region people, or, uh, uh, all Eastern region people, that when you mention Biafra, um, they will change attitude and every other thing. Can you quickly uh, respond to that slightly? Okay, I'll, I'll try. It, it's not just a name, a response to the name, it's a response to anything that's affiliated with that name. You know, I was telling you, you know, when I was speaking earlier about feeling ostracized. To this day, if I arrive at the airport, people look at my passport, depending on who looks at it. They either say, oh, you know, and say nice things, or they have a sarcastic negative attitude. Listen, if you want to, silence people and you want to uh, uh, subdue them, you try everything you can to demonize them, including the, the images and the emblems that represent them. That's what has happened. But if you look at Biafra, if you look at the inventions in Biafra, if you look at the, the survival, if you look at the, the intellectual uh, 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 spirit that was in Biafra, the inventions, then you know that it's not a place that should be condemned. And if you don't mind, uh, Ajita, let me just add that most of my uh, siblings are actually not abroad. Most of them are in Nigeria. There are just three of us. Two of us are in the U.S. One is in uh, the Netherlands, and uh, the other five are still in Nigeria. And I was going to say that after I, I graduated, I went back to Nigeria, actually. But I already had children in the U.S., so part of my responsibility is to, allow, is to raise them here as well, because this is also... Yeah, wow. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, sir. Thank you very, very much for that enlightenment. Okay. Um, I will, we will also be throwing some questions to you. Only, um, well, Madam Joseph Flynn, Josephine, uh, Erewa. Um, I think we have other callers here. Uh, I want to also use this opportunity to tell the callers that if you are calling us, call us on WhatsApp only. You can see it there on the screen. You don't need to call us direct because the phone is now seized. The, my phone is seized right here. And uh, the, the call is so much, I think I have about oh. almost uh, almost 80 something uh, missed call right now. And there are calls coming in and in. So I will advise you to please, of course, um, we still have some few minutes for, uh, with um, um, Sir Philip Evian Jr. So your call, your question will be taken. He is going to attend to you. Just please call us on WhatsApp only. Thank you very much. Hello, Hello Connor. What's your name and where are you calling from? Okay, I'm calling uh, from Canada. Okay, what is your name? My name is uh, Lucy. So uh, my question goes to uh, uh, both both brothers. Okay. So what are they doing? to talk to um, our elderly forums, like uh, uh, on our uh, on easy Igingo, and um, uh, like our uh, Edwin Clark. These are elderly people. These people can talk to these people so that they can buy into the idea of us coming together as Eastern or as um, the type of Piazza or Piazza. And so how do these two elderly people go about talking to Okay, which means if I may understand your question better, um, how can the, our elders, uh, our father and our mothers, can um, contact or communicate with uh, the elders on ground to buy into what we're doing? Okay, I think that's the question. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And I believe they can hear that. I, I, I will, don't know if, uh, if Madam Josephine wants yeah, to I I think, them. anybody who, yeah. Yeah, I think um, let Ma, uh, Madam Josephine, please, I will want you to quickly respond to that question. Uh, the question was, oh my God, um, the question was, um, what are you, the, I think my, my line is jamming here. So um, the question was, what are you um, elderly people doing to make sure the elders in the on, on ground are into what we're doing they buy the idea the um, from 
different angle or should I say from different opinion. Okay, thank you very much. Again, I'm uh, Madam Ani Reguri Sherewa and uh, any elder that is of my age, of my age, you know, uh, definitely know uh, the witness the world, they saw the changes. And the first question that came is, why is it that coast ones, uh, they, are, they got turned off at hearing the name Biafra? And uh, from my own personal experience, and also from the lectures of our leader, we didn't know that Yoruba media was controlling the the affairs of the media. So when the propaganda against Igbos started, they used Biafra negatively. And so the Yoruba media basically capitulated on it and biased the mind of everyone to hate Igbo. So they kind of twist Biafra and mental it and embedded it into uh, with evil. So that's the reason why we were so biased. That's why we are so poisoned. I know this for a fact that I used to feel that way before I became enlightened and I became uh, wise now. You know, I usually don't want to hear uh, evil. The minute I see an evil, I don't even want to sit with an evil. And I came to realize now that the Yoruba media, are in, uh, uh, along with the hateful propaganda, and of course the Britain, Britain has a role to play in it. So all this together is why. But I'm hoping that they are now enlightened. They know now that, you know, uh, uh, Biafra comprises of all of us. And that outside, when we go out, we are looked at as people. We are looked at as not an Eastern region. So okay. I just want to clarify that. What do we want to do about this? When they are hearing us, we need to put more effort. We need to let people know the atrocities and the negativities that the Fulanis are doing in our territory. We need to let them know that they are you, they are victimizing evil. Okay, in okay. Oni, uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, for you to you know be able to, I want you to actually answer um, this caller um, together with what you are already uh, be educating our people on. So um, I think we have a caller here. Um, hello, caller. What's your name and where are you calling from? Can you please please can you please uh, speak louder please? Oh, I speak very loud now and speak very very loud now. Can you hear me now, please? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. What is your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, uh, my name is Biafra Ephraim. My name is Biafra Ephraim. I'm your, so glad today. Your name is Biafra Ephraim. Yes, I'm calling you from British Columbia, Canada. Huh? Okay. Uh, it's my pleasure to see my brother there. I'm overwhelmed. I don't know how to, you know, uh, how to put my excitement to see uh, my senior brother, Philip, uh, Philip, uh, uh, Philip Etienne Jr. there in this platform. Sorry, I just woke up not really a long time that I saw this program. I very, very interesting, and I'm so happy. I'm please, um, um, my brother. Uh, yeah, my brother, please, you have just two minutes to quickly ask yes, the yes, question. Yes, yes, yes. So, so my brother, I I really want to ask this question uh, because it's very important to me. And in this struggle, it's like um, some of our quite even people back home there, or I don't know, maybe abroad, uh, they are not really too more interested about this struggle. We have been in the struggle, I've been in the struggle for a long time. And my brother, my question is that, what can you do to bring our brothers 
together for them to understand the reason that we need Biafra. Because most of them, when you talk about Biafra, they, 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 will, they will tell you it's Igbo something, it's Igbo things like that. So all those shit, I don't really understand what they are doing. Okay. So can you read the name? You read the name, so you read the name here and school of God. You read the name here, so that we can get this thing. We don't, we don't have time. We want to go home. We want to go home. So my brother, please, I want you to help me and let us know. I mean, no, you need to be. I mean, no, you need to be. I mean, when the woman is about to jump into the real world, about to jump in, you can't even get the woman in Canada. So you have a good young baby. God bless you. God bless you. Tell us what we can do to make sure our people is on the forefront because they always say Biafra is for us. You know, we are fighting. We are the honor of Biafra. We know that we are the honor because our late uh, 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 Philip was the one who even led this this uh, Biafra struggle to the end when our our uh, enabled leader Yuku was in the asylum. So I mean. We, we 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 don't supposed to lag behind at all. We don't supposed to lag. We supposed to be at the forefront. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you, sir. God bless you guys. Thank you. Um, I believe um, uh, yeah. I have to switch to um. um <laughs> So, um, sorry for that. No, uh, no, no, that's wonderful. Uh, uh, Eric and Mr. Song, what he I, said, what he said in the language, he repeated, he just said that God will bless me, and then he asked the question again in the language. We need to understand that this is long standing propaganda that goes back many years before many of us were born. This is propaganda that has demonized Igbos and has made us feel. Uh, that we are somehow under the threat of Igbos. So that propaganda is still ongoing, even though the evidence shows that that's not true. And when I talk to my people, one of the things I tell them is, who's your real enemy? You've been given a state since 1967, and you've been given the opportunity to control your geographical space and your resources. How have your lives improved? Your lives have only gotten worse. The enemy is not Igbos. The enemies are within you, your, 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 right there within your state. The political and economic elite who are ready to sell you and sell their consciences to make a profit, to make wealth, you should recognize that those are your enemies. Those who would collude with the foreign national oil companies to take your wealth away from you so that your hospitals are in such bad shape your roads were horrible until Akbabio came and fixed uh, uh, most of them. Your institutions are deteriorating. You know, you are living in poverty. You don't have, you can't even enjoy something as basic as electricity supply. So it is to want for us to redirect, refocus on the real enemy. And it, it's hard to say, you know, within this space, I understand that time is against us, but we need to refocus and recognize who the real enemy is. And the enemy is not the people that we've lived with in harmony for generations, but those who would work with our enemies to undermine our lives, even though some of those people are right within our families, are from our ethnic groups, are speaking the same languages as we are. Those are real, when we understand that that's the real enemy, I think that will help us to come together uh, and, and, and focus on that enemy and not focus on, on what propaganda has told us, which is that uh, our neighbors are our uh, problem. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I will quickly um, um, let um, this caller um, ask his question. Then um, from there, we are going to be calling it a day because our time is almost up, which I would like to hear from our mother, Madam Josephine Erwa, to pass a message to the people of, uh, of the coastal region. And likewise, um, our father of the day, you are also going to be passing the message to the people. So uh, we have a caller here. Caller, what is your name? Where are you calling from? Okay. Uh, uh, I greet you guys. Uh, good afternoon. Afternoon. Uh, from here. My name, my name is uh, Agusuku Okay, Mazi, please, you have two minutes. Yeah, I will be very, my question will be very, I will be very concise. 
What I want to ask is just three questions. I want him to, you know, he said that the Biafra is an ideology and there are some people that did not buy the idea. And uh, our leader has already been explaining everything about this and been going around and say that Biafra is... Hello. Oh my God, I think I'm tired. I missed um, this person's call. Uh, please let me make this clear. Magita, please give me one minute. Okay. Call out when you are calling in. Please speak directly to the phone. Start removing your face because it will not make your sound come lively. Please. Your mic is off, GT. Oh, Can thank you, you very you much. Can you hear me? Thank you very much, sir. Um, we have a caller here. Um, uh, he's also a different activist, which I believe he. As a one or two uh, person. Out clearly, yeah, you're coming out clear. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Okay, uh, my name is my name is Come uh, again. I'm from Vienna. Hey. I'm, 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 can you please come again? I don't know. Yeah, okay, we can hear you loud and clear now. What is your name and where are you calling from? Hmm. My name is Obina Uwako. I am calling from Vienna. Of okay, Mazi, you have um, three minutes, please. All right. I'm, uh, like I said, I know I'm, I have to start by appreciating you, you people on the studio, and um, our our evil brother that came out to clear some things that have been a little bit confusing to our friends, especially those in the different areas. And I want to go straight to him. I, I don't know if he himself has um, the knowledge to pass reading. I know he's a scholar. Or uh, maybe to the parents, uh, to our able leader, uh, to our able leader in the name of his uh, question. I want to know the time of, in the time of Jeffrey, I just want if he has any knowledge about the boundaries, especially in the present state as it stands now. If they are part of the Jeffrey, I mean, uh, uh, made up of this. Um, uh, nation before the invasion of uh, our colonial masters and those that are used as an instrument that are used. I mean. So, how are we from, um, I am trying to buy to see if we get a very positive knowledge because um, we have been fighting differently. You know, this struggle has been, um, we have been having different attacks on different places. You know, both one of uh, both one of people within us that I don't know whether they are being planted to take official among us. So I stand by to listen to you. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And um, of course, uh, before you do that, uh, before we refer the question, I think I have to hold this phone uh, because this is our last call mm -hmm. for the day. This is our last call. This is our last call for the day. Uh, I believe you had um, the question um, this person is asking that where did, uh, during the, um, or before the Biafran War, where did our boundary actually started from? Oh, the 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 boundaries. Um, the boundaries of the old eastern. Yeah, the the, the old, old eastern region. Yeah, the old re eastern region. You know, if if you look at the 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 five Igbo states, the uh, Aquaibom, Cross River, Bialsa Delta, not uh, Bialsa and uh, rivers. Those were what constituted that constituted the the old eastern region uh having said that i'm not a fan of strict boundaries our boundaries were always fluid it's only after we got into the political the, the politics behind boundaries and resource control that we've really started fi fighting each other for instance there, there have been uh, boundary wars you know they only happened probably most of them happened after the war you know, so th those were the physical boundaries, but I really don't care about them. I think our, our boundaries should be fluid and we should be able to continue to crisscross those boundaries and interact uh, uh, culturally and, and, and economically. Yeah, but those were the formal boundaries. And um, I, I can't speak for other people, but a lot of these boundaries, when they are created, they're created for uh, political reasons and without real uh taking into consideration what the people actually want of course thank you very much sir okay um we are bringing the program to an end now 
Well, quickly, I would like to hear from uh, our mother, Madam Josephine Erewa. Um, I we want you, Ma, to you know, I, I, um, address this issue of boundaries and uh, that the, the caller actually asked, and your message for the people of a coastal region of Biafran land. What message do you have for those people? How do you think, or from your own opinion, what are the reactions you 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 think they should be? Um, reacting the way you you think they should be reacting to the current struggle and the current happenings in the African land of today. Um, uh, you have to do that um, before we then bring in our, our father, um, then we can call it a day. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Well, we all listen to our leader in his lectures. He, he, he educated us anywhere you see women tie two pieces of wrapper up and down with blouse and scarf, head tie. That's where the boundary began. And when you, you know, so that is the boundary. That is it, you know. He described it very well. Thank so, you, Ben. What is the message for the people? that then? question. Exactly. Then, excuse me? Yeah, go ahead. I said exactly. You've answered the question. Okay. Then, uh, regarding uh, coastlands, you know, um, uh, 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 thinking that uh, the issue of Biafra, you have been deceived. And I think that message is coming out now. Even myself talking to you, I just made it clear I'm an example of who is deceived. And now I witnessed the work. I was born in the East, and I share, that's why I use my own biography to tell you that coastlands, we are Eastern region. Eastern region is bite of Biafra, and bite of Biafra is Biafra. That's where the sun rises. So you are not Odudua, you are not in the West, and you are not uh, in the north. You are Biafra. And the, the where they did the Nigeria now three areas, three sections, now then bring together Biafra, which is eastern region, western region, and north. Make I just put them in my own uh, uh, my own way. So you are not western region. You are not northern region, so you are eastern region. You are Biafra, you are coastal. Even when I talk a little about Shakiri, Calabar, anything when during Britain, uh, Britain when they bring war to Edo, who, where did they take Oboramen to? Oboramen, he died on exile. Where? They took him to Calabar for trial. So pay attention to that. Then let's talk about Nana. Nana of Ichekiri. Where did they take him to? They took him to Calabar for trial before they took him on exile to Ghana before he came back and ended, you know, in Coco where he died. So why would they take Oborane and uh, of Bini and uh, 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 um, Nana of Ishakiri to Calabar if, uh, if not be say na Eastern region and na Biafra will be. So Calabar played a significant role, but what they did when the Nigeria came, they made us, to, if I see a Calabar person, I see that person different. I see an Igbo person, I see the Igbo person as, because I don't use hateful propaganda. So that is it. And I hope I answered the question because they wouldn't have taken a forum to Calabar, taking a, a Nana to Calabar for trial. Why did not take and go Lagos? Why did not take and go North? Why did uh, 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 only of uh, Lagos or about Lagos not come out during Nana trial? So Mekuna, they see. These are the propaganda. These are the mess they did to us. So you better wake up now. 
appreciate these programs, opening your eyes, educating you. Know that they have deceived us with divide and conquer to take what it belongs to you, like Philip, a young son just said it. They are owning all your wealth and all that, but we want our Biafra, we are constant. So we can begin to take care of us. Or else we go to answer other people's name. I mean, you want that full and he can't keep your name. They don't change your name already. Uh -huh. So this is it. We uh, my message to posters is wake up, wise up, appreciate all these messages. All these people coming, our leader. Now we have Philip Akion. Now we have uh, Coastal Biafra TV. I appreciate all this because if not be us, you're not going to get them. That the reason why they deceived us was because there was with no media to help us. But now we don't get the media now. That's what they did to Juku and Philip Akion that made the war to go, but maybe now God wants them that way. Our leader mm -hmm. has come now. And, uh, you know, wake up, because now we have plans with me. Anything mm -hmm. when we now see, make we now they keep quiet. And they, mm -hmm. they do. Let people know their atrocities, but put at least they come, they are all strangers. Coming to take what belongs to you, where God keeps you. Eh? So mm -hmm. wake up, oh. And to mm -hmm. my zone, don't be talking about Niger Delta and all that Royal Niger Delta company. When are they talking about? Don't say that because it is never a part of bite of the Afra. Those are part of Nigeria, so don't talk about it. So coastlands be white. We are the Afrans, and don't let them change our name and our identity and who we are and our destiny. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you very, very much, um, Madam Josephine Erewa. Yeah, um, before we round it up, of course, we'll be hearing from our father, um, the person of um, Sir Philip Efion Jr. Please, uh, so, please, I have something to say before you give me the microphone to round up. Okay, uh, then let me quickly um, um, give you the floor. Please, let me do the, take the, take the mic, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. I was trying to say something here. Um, you know, I want to make this statement before I do that. I will say on behalf of the Isoko people who are Biafrans, we, we you know, acknowledge the presence of Sir Philip F. Young, the junior, who humbly, you know, answered to uh, to come in this program, uh, you know, to speak and educate the world, you know, at large concerning the issues of Biafra. We say, be organega lowe, organega lowe means God bless you in the Isoko language. And I also want to make this a statement to the entire uh, 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 Nigeria, and especially Biafra and the, the coastal. Uh, they say that uh, Igbo will marginalize us and this. And my question is this Who is marginalizing you today? Fulani. Who is raping you? Fulani. Who is killing you? Fulani. The Southern of Sokoto have about 23 oil well. How many do you have in Isoko? How many do you have in Urubu? How many do you have in Izon? How many do you have in Calabar? How many do you have in Ibibio? How many do you have in Unkwane? How many do you have in Edo? How many do you have in Ibo? I'm asking you, who is marginalizing you? Who is who is stealing from you? Tiwa Dajuma, Tiwa Dajuma from Middle Bed has about 18 oil well. In the so-called Niger data. Okay? In the second Niger Delta, and another thing again, they say, oh, because they're a minority, Igbo are majority. So who are the one oppressing everybody today? Is it not the Fulani 1%? Fulani are 1% minority oppressing the 99% the majority. So it is not about how, how, how many are we. It is about structure. When a country is structured, it will work fine. Not about some majority oppressing minority and all that. So I would like to cut, uh, I would like to draw the microphone for you. But once again, I will say to... Philip F. the Junior, thank you very much. Where Kobilo in Isoko language means well done, sir. Well done. It is a great privilege to be your president. I feel like I have spoken to your father already. I feel like I was speaking to our internal leader, uh, General Chukwe Meka Dumegu Juku. Thank you so thank much, you. sir, for you know, honoring our invitation. Thank you, sir. 
Thank you very much, um, my brother Dudu. Thank you so much. And of course, um, we appreciate you, sir. Um, please, I want you to quickly turn the mic. Uh, I think we, we've already superseded um, the plan time now, but um, of course, let us just um, hear from you, pass a message. You know, um, the things that you have actually, or should I say the way you want things from your own perspective, the way you think things should go, especially uh, in the coastal region of Biafran land of today. So please, um, um, sir, take the mic and pass a message to your people. Thank you so much. You know, the expressions of gratitude for my being here, I appreciate, but I'm also grateful to be here. This is about all of us, and we're all interconnected across generations, across ethnic uh, nationalities. So it's just as much uh, a privilege for me to be here and for you to allow me to share my thoughts. Let's not make any mistake about the fact that what is happening in Nigeria today goes back to that war and the atrocities, the violence, the the desecration, the, the des desecration uh, of, of human life. I believe that's the word. Human lives were desacralized. Um, you know, the, the, the brutality, the, uh, the, the, the violence, the cruelty, you know, the viciousness of that war, and even before the war, when you hear about people's eyes being gouged out and women, their wounds open and, and children ripped from them, you know, that war and the pre-war atrocities were never addressed. And we created a culture of violence, which is revisiting us today. It is all connected to that experience. And until we come to terms with that truth, and address the reality of that war and at least apologize for those atrocities. You wait and see, I'm not a prophet of, of doom, but the violence is only going to get worse. And unfortunately, it is now coming to the doorsteps of people who didn't care about what happened to us. I want us moving forward to think, remember the women's uh, Eastern Women's Revolution of 1929, and how they were able to accomplish that, the networking without telephones, without internet, what was it that made them successful and get the colonizers to change some of their, their, their oppressive laws? Unity, the coming together, the oneness, and that is what we should be aspiring for. Um, I do like what uh, was stated earlier about how, you know, that is part of the, the, the goal of, of, uh, of, um, of, of this movement. Um, I, someone had said that I'd called uh, 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 Biafra an ideology. No, Biafra is reality to me. Biafra, when I count my citizenship, I always remember that I was a citizen of that country during the war and that country gave me life gave me sustenance nourished me it will always be a part of my reality so it's not just an ideology for me it is real and however we need an ideology a vision to move forward when we when we uh, 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 evoke the biafran spirit which is always what i talk about when you evoke that spirit you need to evoke it with knowledge and ideology. There has to be something there of substance that you will use to drive the vision so that the vision eventually becomes reality. That's what I meant when I talked about um, ideology. Uh, so thank you very much. I do appreciate the time with you. I've learned a lot and um, I shared as much as I, I, I could. Um, I gave it my best. And I, I'm sure there'll be room for more conversations. God bless everybody. And, and thank you so much. Thank, thank you so very, much. very much. Thank you very, very much. And um, of course, we also thank our mother, the youngest um, lady that I've ever met in the struggle. Uh, the, the, the more she is young, the, uh, the, the stronger she became. Thank you very, very much, Oni, uh, Madam Josephine. 
Erewa. And of course, we truly appreciate you, Sir Philip Ethion Jr., for your time. You know, despite all the um, you know, um, all the busy and busy schedule, um, we still find a way to fix it out. And thank you very much for coming. Of course, we'll be looking forward to have you here again for more enlightenment and for more conversation. Thank you very much. And thank you to the, uh, the viewers all over the world who have been sharing, of course, and who have been you know, commenting. We appreciate your comments because we do learn from your comments, sometimes because those comments are so amazing, and especially what we have today. So we say thank you very much, and um, we say we're Cobrivo, just the way uh, my brother, my comrade, Idudu Uvie Muno, have said. Yeah, uh, I also thank you, Dudu. Uh, I think um, our sister Tamuno Tonye is not here to end the program with us because of network issues. And we say thank you to everyone. See you um, next week, Sunday, as usual. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.